Okay, this is the unit one review, um, just an overview. So we're gonna look at the six questions that I have put on here. Um, the first one that pops up for me is put the steps of finding the inverse in order. So our first step is always to change the f of x to y. And then we are going to switch our x and y's. We're gonna solve for y and then change y back to the negative, f of negative one of x. Um, you do need to memorize those uh, steps. Okay, for our second question, it is looking at finding, determining the inverse of the function. And I wanted to remind you that the inverse of the function is not just the inverse of the function, it's the inverse of all the functions operations. So a real quick way of catching the potential answers is by looking at the opposite for the opposite operation, starting with the pause plus, which one can be eliminated because it has a plus, that it, that, that it doesn't have a minus six because the inverse should have a minus six. That eliminates C. Which one can be eliminated because it's uh, not doing the, uh, it's not the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So if you have minus six, but you don't have divided by two, then that eliminates A and it eliminates D, which basically by process of elimination leaves B as our possible answer. And we can check our answer by checking using Desmos we would put our original equation in and then use the gear to switch to the table. When you switch to the table, you'll be able to see the equation, you'll be able to see the table, and then you put in your what you believe is the, uh, the inverse. And remember that on the table, zero and six should switch on the inverse. So we should be seeing six and zero. We should see one and eight switching to eight and one, and then two and 14. And then we can draw the y equals x uh, formula and see does this side of it look like it's reflecting, turning over and laying down on its side on this side. So again, six zero, a zero six should become six zero. Uh, whatever, let's see, one eight should become eight one. 214 should become 142. As long as those all match, then you know you have the inverse. Okay, so the next question is asking us to figure out what transformations are going on. Remember to start inside the parentheses or in this case, absolute value signs. And that tells you the left or right. So because it's a minus four, that means four is positive, which means we're going to the right. Then we look behind it for the K, it's a plus six. So it's going up by six. When we look in front at the A, it's positive, it's po uh, a number bigger than one, which means it is a vertical stretch by three. When we look in front of B of X for B, and there isn't one, so we don't have to worry about that. We look back in front of A, there is a negative there. That means it's a vertical, uh, it's a reflection across the X axis because remember reflections are backwards to what we want to say. And then in front of the X, there was no a negative, so there's no reflection across the X axis. Okay, so our next question was asking us again to do the transformations. Again, start in the, inside the parentheses, look at your H, then look at your K, look in front for A, then look at B. And remember B is always written upside down in our answer. So one half is actually, we would say by two, not by one half. Then we look for a negative in front and a negative inside. Okay, and then our linear equation. So linear is f of x, absolute value is absolute value, quadratic is x squared, rational is one divided by x, square root is square root, I just down here, cubic is cubed, cubed root is cubed root, and then exponential is two to the x is one example, and logarithmic its opposite is log base two of x. And then the domains and ranges, you can reuse these domains more than once on a few of them. So remember that linear is all real numbers, absolute value, domain is all real numbers, x is greater than zero. The um, rational, x cannot equal to zero on domain and range. On x squared, you have the same as absolute value, so it's all real numbers and greater than or equal to zero. Square root is, at domain is zero to infinity. 
or greater than uh, or equal to zero and range is also greater than or equal to zero. Uh, X cubed is all row members on both domain and range. Cubed root, same. The exponential, you cannot have uh, X cannot be zero and no, X can be all row members. Y cannot be uh, is from zero, non-inclusive to infinity. And logarithmic, you cannot have uh, your X's can only be from zero to infinity, non-inclusive, but your Y's can be all row members. Okay, well, that's a real quick cap. I hope you got, got all that. Um, make sure you do this, it is for grade, but it is more to just give you the overview of what you'll be tested on on Tuesday.